Welcome back to Lipids in Biochemistry. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Make sure to like this video and subscribe. In, the, in this video, we're going to talk about unsaturated fatty acids. Now, there's two other things I want to talk about here. Number one, we're going to talk about the melting point. And then we're going to talk about another way to classify unsaturated fatty acids that you've probably heard of, but you may not know what it means. All right, so if you remember back to the previous video on saturated fatty acids, I said there was a general rule. If I look at fatty acids that all have the same number of carbon atoms, those constitute a family, that means they all, like in this case, all have 18 carbons. So for this rule to work, they all have to have 18 carbons. So we have stearic with zero double bonds, oleic with one double bond, linoleic with two double bonds, and linolenic with three double bonds. All have 18 carbons, so this is satisfied. What is the, um, what is the melting point of stearic acid. Well, I don't have the number exactly, but if you go back to the previous video, that melting point was a positive number. It was, I think it was somewhere around like 40 or 50. So it's a really high melting point, meaning it's gonna exist as a solid at room temperature. But if I go to oleic right here, and, and then I go to linoleic, linolenic, and so forth, what's happening to the melting point every time I add a double bond? So with one double bond, the melting point drops to 16 degrees Celsius. If I go to two double bonds with linoleic, the melting point drops to five degrees Celsius. And then if I go to linolenic with three double bonds, the melting point drops to negative 11 degrees Celsius. Now, arachidonic acid is not the same number of carbons. It's 20, but notice the melting point is way down at minus 50. So the general rule with unsaturated fatty acids that have the same number of carbon atoms is if you increase the number of double bonds for the same number of carbon atoms, that tends to decrease the melting point. And that's pretty much always true for any fatty acids we're going to be dealing with. For the same number of carbon atoms, so maybe all 18 carbons and so forth, if I increase the number of double bonds, I, that drops the melting point, okay? Which means that Saturated fatty acids tend to exist as solids, but if I talk about monounsaturated or polyunsaturated fatty acids, they tend to be liquid. So if I have a container of that vegetable oil, like Crisco or something, vegetable oil, that's why you see it as a liquid, because it's packed with polyunsaturated fatty acids. But if you go to a ribeye steak before you cook it and you see the... Uh, when it's cold in the refrigerator, you see that all the fat deposits on there, the fatty tissue, that's mostly saturated fat. That's why it looks like a solid, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. Now, before we conclude this video, I wanna talk about one more way to classify these fatty acids. And this only is valid for unsaturated fatty acids, all right? Remember when we were looking at the position of the double bond for the delta, like this 9 or 912, 912, 15, and so forth, we started numbering from the carboxyl. Well, there's one other thing I can do, and I'm going to do this, say, in, let me do this in dark blue. If we start from the other end, where instead this is position 1, I'll show you what I mean. Let's count backwards and then see when we encounter the double bond. 1, 2, 3, 4 five, six, seven, eight. This one also happens to be nine, ironically. Okay, so if I start from the end of the fatty acid tail as one and count to where I encounter the double bond, I see I hit position nine. Okay, the last carbon in any fatty acid, we haven't gone over this. The last carbon, you know how you number carbons like alpha, beta, gamma, delta, and so forth? Doesn't matter how long the fatty acid is, the last carbon is always designated as carbon omega. So if I want to classify this fatty acid, this unsaturated fatty acid, I write omega and then I put a dash and then the number where I encounter the double bond from the end, omega 9. This one, oleic acid, would be considered an omega 9 fatty acid. Now that might not be, mean anything to you right now, but you may be able to see where I'm going. Let's look at these other ones. So now I'm going to start on linoleic, as this is position 1 from the back, <coughs> and I'm going to number 2, 3, 4, 5, and I encounter this one at position 6. So I'm going to label this linoleic as omega-6, okay? 
Maybe you've heard of omega-6 fatty acids. And then on linolenic, I'm going to put this as position 1, count backwards 2, and I encounter this one quickly at position 3. So linolenic would be an omega-3 fatty acid. Okay. So you probably haven't heard of omega-9 just because there's not really... There are biological functions of that, certainly, but the main biological functions we talk about are omega-6 and omega-3. Okay. So omega-6, omega-3. Omega-3, usually we consider having the property of being anti-inflammatory. The reason being is some proteins or enzymes involved in anti-inflammatory pathways can actually use omega-3 fatty acids as sort of a coenzyme. They can attach themselves to the enzyme or protein and they can serve basically to pick up and scavenge free radicals. And they can do other things as well. Omega-6 fatty acids were once thought to be very inflammatory. This has since been disproven. Omega-6 fatty acids are not intrinsically inflammatory. They can be used for inflammatory purposes, but they themselves are not inflammatory. Okay? If you are eating a perfectly uh, non-inflammatory diet and you eat a lot of omega-6 fatty acids, you're not going to be in inflammation. Okay? Omega-6 fatty acids, if given the stimulus, so we're talking about a bad standard American diet, then they can be used to promote inflammation, but they themselves are not intrinsically inflammatory. All right, um, Just like omega-3 fatty acids are not intrinsically anti-inflammatory. They have to be used for that purpose under the given stimulus. If that stimulus doesn't exist, then they're not anti-inflammatory in terms of this one, or they're not inflammatory in terms of the omega-6. Okay. One thing we're going to talk about in the next video is another property of unsaturated fatty acids, which is sort of a biological application, is because there are double bonds, they're very susceptible to oxidation by free radicals. Okay, And we're going to talk about the biological implications of that in the next video. But hopefully this gives you a very um, detailed look at how you would draw them, how you would name them, and some of their properties. Okay, Join us in the next video. Make sure to like this video and subscribe for future videos and notifications. Thank you.